From <sighs> save point. Ladder two! All right. Oh, we're even we're even closer to the end. This is the last one. Echo, this is the last one. Oh, I can't wait. <sighs> I thought this was try. This is ladder one. This is ladder two. <laughs> I'm Sink. And I'm Echo. <laughs> and we are back once again playing Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. In the last episode, we cornered Gant until he had to... Uh, he executed uh, his yeah, right yeah. To not to testify. And so he uh, ran away for a lunch date or breakfast date or whatever. I think it was lunch. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, probably, probably lunch. I mean, it's... 2.21, so I, th I think it's probably What lunch. early bird is at 2.21? I mean, we, granted, that was 15 minutes, so let's say, you know, it's 2, two o'clock. But, but yeah, still. still. Um, anyway, aside from Gant's um, eating habits, um, we now called Lana Sky up to the stand to hear her testimony about what happened. and So we can hopefully try to get something out of her that... Uh, Gives us a lead on Gant. Because now that he's uh, invoked his rights to not testify, he now also comes with that is that he can't say anything about it's about to defend himself. So okay. there's that. So it also comes with risks, apparently. Yeah, but and that's, I don't that's know one what... that's one of the risks, is that is that he can't he can't say anything about the case from here on so, out. Yeah, so if we get Lana to testify to well, an extent, did, yeah. Then we may be able to get him. Get but him to talk again, yeah. We, we, he, she has that hold over Emma, mm -hmm. which is going to be causing problems because, as I said before, that if she's doing something, it's because she's doing it to protect Emma. Uh huh, right. So with that, let's get started. <laughs> 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 Now then, will the defendant, Miss Lana Sky, please take the stand? Hi, Lana. What's up? Miss Lana Sky, you are the chief prosecutor. I'm sure you're aware of what is required of you. But, Mr. Edward, you already know everything. You know all that I've done these past two years. Please, provide this court with your testimony, Miss Sky. And remember, you are under oath. We want to hear the truth. Of course. The truth. As Lana, no matter what happens, I'll always be your sister. It's the truth as she looks away. <laughs> now then, your testimony, if you will. That was like, yes. Yeah. The truth. Right. Right. Yeah. The truth. Which, the absolute truth. The which, truth in which I would speak. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which truth is that exactly? Your truth, my truth, his truth? His truth. Her truth? Our truth. <laughs> Whatever. First, tell us about your relationship with Gant. Everything hinges on your testimony. Well, it all started with that breakfast date. <laughs> You're the only chance we got. We we have to get Gant. All right, Lana. Please. We're trying to help. I worked alongside Gant for years. There's no truth to this blackmail dairy. I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. My only motivation was to get Dart convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. Okay. Hmm. Are you sure about this testimony? Your Honor, I'm convinced to a capital offense. Of course I'm sure. But Lana! If this is true, then that means Chief Gan had nothing to do with this. That's what I've been that's what I've been telling you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wright, you've got to help her. She's sacrificing herself because of me. But what if she's telling the truth? She's not. I know my own sister. You're so predictable. <laughs> You're so... You wear your emotions, your dots on your face, Phoenix, <laughs> that this girl who knows you only for three days was able to read you. Yeah, exactly. Whenever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. Deep down, she's really screaming in agony. Agony. Ay. 
Agony. Agony. <laughs> yeah, this is no time to start second guessing myself. All right, Phoenix. The defense now may now begin its cross examination. All right. How many years exactly? Ever since I made senior detective. Let's see, I was 24 then, so that would be five years. That would be five years. Detective Grant and Sky, Detective Sky, were legendary partners. I personally saw them testify in numerous cases. She must have been good coming from the same school as Mia. Damon Gant was a respectable detective, that's why. But think about it, Miss Sky. You didn't murder Detective Goodman. You told me as much yesterday in jail. You still don't get it, do you, Mr. Wright? Any testimony you cannot present in court is as useless as idle gossip. I stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. And... Did you do so to help your sister? Joe Dark was a serial killer. My sister almost became his last victim that day. I didn't want that incident to ruin her life. But what she did was justifiable self-defense. She wouldn't have been charged with anything. That's not the point. She was traumatized that day all because of that creep. That's why I couldn't forgive him. Lana! So that's why you fabricated the evidence two years ago. I guess that was self-defense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. You say you did this all by yourself? Yes. Would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? It seems I was the first person to discover the scene. The broken prosecutor award knife was stuck in the victim's body. What? But Prosecutor Marshall died from an unfortunate accident. That's only a situation you dreamed was possible. The reality is, it wasn't my sister who took the prosecutor's life. Fantasize all you want, Mr. Wright, but I'll never change this statement. You mean, Prosecutor Marshall wound up being killed by Dark? Something like that. If that is so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Dark was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh, that was lying on the floor a little distant away. It was probably knocked away in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She's trying to cover up her lies with more lies. All just to get protect me. Oh, no. I'm forcing three characters. How do you do this? <laughs> So, when you found a scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. I broke off the tip of Dark's knife, planted it inside the wound, then moved the body. You planted the tip of Dark's knife in the victim's wound? And then you moved the body? But why? Why would you do that? You of all people should know, Edgeworth. You've always had a good head on your so shoulders. My head isn't that bad, but maybe I ought to ask for the sake of the others. Why did you move the body, or why did you plant the knife? I mean, I think we already know why she planted the knife, but mm -hmm. why did you move the body? Right. When you showed up on the crime, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where you dis it. It was by Chief Gant's off desk. But the body was found by your desk. Why did you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Well, let's have the witness explain this in more detail. The reason Miss Guy moved the body. The pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. Pieces with a jar, you mean? Yes, that wretched jar Mr. Wright showed us earlier. 
What? Why would you keep that jar? Who thought this jar was was good? <laughs> the opposite. If you turn it like upside down, I understand. But mm -hmm. like this, just screams like an accident waiting to happen. Yeah. Right. That's why it's called the un unstable jar. Yeah. In order to show that Dark committed the crime, I felt it would be more expedient to move the body. So, when you first found the body, the jar was already... Of course it had been shattered to pieces. If you look at the crime scene, it would be clear right away what happened. Neil Marshall was dead and Dart was lying unconscious. In other words, the jar must have been broken during their struggle. I see. What's the matter, ma matter, Emma? Apparently the jar shattered at the time the crime was committed. But I have a feeling there is more to it than that. There must be a contradiction here somewhere. Anywhere, I committed this fabrication completely alone. My only motivation was to get Dark committed. It had nothing to do with Emma. So you rearranged the crime scene. Are you sure you didn't do this to keep Emma from looking like the murderer? How many times do I have to tell you, Mr. Wright? Emma didn't do it. Period. Are you so desperate to hide that fact? You're willing to risk the death sentence? Is this a death sentence? Or is this... Isn't this... Set this for life to jail? No, um, no. She's lying. She did it, so I would be blamed for that. For what happened. In any case, as a prosecutor, I, what I've done is unpardonable. There's nothing I could do to make up for my actions. Mr. Wright, my sister is lying. My sister's lying. Looks like she's determined to protect you to the end. She's, and she insists she fabricated the evidence by herself. There's no way she could have done it alone. I've got to get Lana to talk more. If she's lying, then she's bound to slip up and make a contradiction. Which one was the one where they say that there? it sounds like there's a contradiction? Dang it, I forgot. It was this one. It was this one. Mm -hmm. Shatter during the event. Or something. Just go ahead and, uh... Go one more over. Okay, now go back. Yeah, it's that one. Why would it threaten her plan? Why would the jar in, a jar in its current state threaten its pl their plan? Why would it be on Gant's side threaten her plan if it, if not Lana's side? What's the difference between Gant and Lana's side? What? Yeah, that's it. Can I go back to the the unstable jar. Oh, I forgot. That was not in the yeah. most recent. Emma is written on the surface in blood. I mean, that has to be the only day. Miss Sky, I understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the forgery at the scene where Neil Marshall was murdered? If that truth were to be exposed now, the past two years of your life would have been useless. Even so, I am compelled to bring to everyone's attention a significant contradiction in your testimony. Uh, a contradiction in my testimony? Oh, wow. <laughs> Transition there. Yeah. Bad. You testified and I quoted... I quote, the pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. That's right. Do you have a problem with that? It's, sim it's a simple oversight, really. You see, a message was written on this jar with the victim's blood. Yes, the prosecutor must have written it in his final moments. 
Exactly so. And this is where the contradiction lies. Because it goes across the break marks, right? In order for the victim to be able to write his message on a jar, it would, it must not have been broken before he died. Ah. Uh, he could have written Emma's name on a shattered jar. Yeah, that would be pretty difficult. Yeah. Very difficult. Well, considering that it's across pieces, very difficult. Uh, yeah. If it was on like one huge piece, that is possible. Right. Order, order. Your Honor, it would appear more information is needed in regard to this jar and the display message. We may be missing something critical here. Something critical. Chief Prosecutor, it seems you're as in the dark as we are about the truth toward the truth towards which we are headed. What? Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece it together the information to arrive at the truth. Very well. The witness may now continue her testimony. Jar and message in blood. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar, but it was dark in the room and I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The fragments were large, so I, I'm sure I got them all. All I could think was about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. Right. You mean you are the one who wiped all wiped away the bless the message in blood, the blessage as you will, if you will. Yeah. I wasn't chief prosecutor at the time. She didn't think Dark was the real murderer. That's why she tried to erase the real evidence. Text moves so sometimes. <laughs> Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. So the jar was already broken. It's a, it's a miracle that thing hasn't broken earlier. Like, actually. Yeah. It certainly looks as feeble as the defense's case. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. But not as people as the judge's judgment. Oh! <laughs> you were an ace detective who never missed a detail. Do you really expect us to believe you didn't investigate what was written on the jar pieces? Normally I would have. But it was dark in the room, I didn't have time to check it out. So you didn't know your sister's name was written on the jar. No. no. If I had known, I would have gathered all the pieces and ground them to dust. Well, that helps my case. <laughs> Lana, you do that for me? <laughs> it seems you two might make up yet. <laughs> anyway, I just barely had enough time to move the body as it was. If someone happened upon the scene, you'd lose your chance to erase the evidence. You must have been in a hurry. I was. I knew I had to destroy the evidence before anyone came. This is rather shocking. I'm afraid this action of yours revealed what really happened. What do you mean? If you really thought Dark killed Professor Marshall, you would have wiped away the blood. What else could I have done in that situation? Lana! I only had a few moments. There wasn't enough time for me to do anything else but gather up the pieces. But how could you see with the power out? It should have been pitch black in the office. In that office. Mm -hmm. A detective is always prepared, Mr. Wright. She had a flashlight, right? <laughs> Even now, I carry a pocket light, night, light and a camera with me. My camera is now my phone in my pocket, like it's also my phone. Right. In this day and age. Technology! Don't worry, uh, Ace Attorney <laughs> world. You'll get there probably in the next game. In the next ten years. And by next game, I mean after Spirit of Justice. Because <laughs> I don't think they're there yet. I, just, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. In the next ten years. Even I carry my bottle of emergency luminol wherever I go. What? 
Okay. Just whatever. in case I find blood. Just in case I happen upon a crime scene. Yeah. I never miss. I never miss anything. I got every last piece. You got every last piece. Hmm. All right. Last one to press. So, you, so you illegally rearranged the crime scene. Yes. Yeah, I don't have any excuse for my actions. Yeah, it's pretty much what you're summing up. I'm so sorry, Lana. I, I didn't know. I, tra I treated you so badly all this time. It's not too late. There's still plenty of time to make up. After we got to the bottom of this incident. No doubt this day will leave a permanent stain on the history of the prosecutor's office. Well, I mean, she was a detective then. Sure, but... But she's confessing as a prosecutor. Right. More contradictions have surfaced in her testimony. Your sister's really putting up a fight. She must really care about you. Still, she's not doing this right, this the right way. I think I finally figured out the contradictions in her testimony. There's one final possibility that might turn everything around. I don't see it. Is it this last one? Well, we've got like, what, five? Five statements, so I'll give you this one. No, it's not that one. Yeah. Well, so narrow it down to four now. This is what get me. I'm sure I got them all, but all the pieces were all in the evidence locker? Or at least it was all on the floor in the evidence locker room. When it was emptied from Goodman's locker. I think. Because we, we pieced most of it up. That's the key word there. You just said it. Yeah, we... we most of it... Up. Yeah. From in the evidence room. And one large piece, the one with the, the line, was mm -hmm. kept in Gant's safe. Right. Miss Sky, I believe this jar conceal con conceals a truth even you were unaware of. What? We found the final piece of this jar in Chief Gant's safe. In the chief's safe? But how? Wait, wasn't she there when he testified? Uh-huh. Okay, whatever. I knew it. She really didn't know. There's something even more disturbing about that final piece. There was... Still blood on it. But the witness just testified that she gathered every last piece and wiped the blood off of them. Yes, which leaves with only one explanation. On the night Prosecutor Marshall was murdered, you were not the first to show up on the scene. Chief Gant got there before you. But couldn't the defendants have simply missed a piece? Well, I mean, sure. No. Well, yes, she could have. But the thing is, why would that piece be get safe? Then? Sure. I'm afraid that's unlikely. The pieces are too big for anyone to miss, let alone a ace an ace detective. That may well be, but everyone makes mistakes. Even I once wasted an entire day looking for my dentures. <laughs> <laughs> they were in my mouth all along. <laughs> can you believe that? Yes, I can, actually. Have you forgotten, Your Honor? When this witness arrived at the scene, the jar was already broken. Oh, that... There's no way a name could have been written on a shattered jar. Another person discovered the scene prior to the witness. So is this like the Maya note from the Mia murder? I don't, that also doubt that was a possibility, but right. still. I hope you're not implying that this person was Chief Gant. At the time, he was looking for Dark Downstairs. Besides, even if he was there first, why would he... Okay. <laughs> the question is, if he did arrive there first, why did he hide that fact for two years? Because he's the one who killed Marshall? Question mark? Question mark? Up, up, up. <laughs> Well, Your Honor, can you answer us that? N mm. 
Nah! No! <laughs> Judge had a breakdown. Recess. Are you finally calm down, Judge? Wait, I'm not the one on trial here. On trail? <laughs> These, it's typo. Yes, typo! On trail! Damon Gant arrived at the scene of the crime prior to the witness. He proceeded to break the jar and proceeded to. Oh. And proceeded to break the jar and purposefully hid one of the broken pieces. Question. What is this action called? Fabrication. But why would Chief Gant do that? In light of what happened afterwards, isn't it clear? What happened afterwards? Discovering the scene, Lana Sky believed her sister Emma killed the victim. Determined to help her sister, she sought Gant's aid. Lending her his aid, Gant helped her create evidence that incriminated Dark. Sparing Emma. And there and here is the reason. The reason why Miss Sky became chief the chief's puppet. Ouch. Don't bite your fingernails that hard. N n no, no I, I did it on my own. Please, sis, stop trying to protect the chief. I I can't watch you suffer anymore for my sake. No, you didn't. I wasn't you, Emma. You didn't kill anyone. I don't believe anything Mr. Wright says. The first attorney make up the most the most the, the he most foul, foul lies to defend their clients. The he. Foul lies? Imagine that coming from my own client. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I guess you do. I guess you do seem the type who likes to twist the truth. Um, I think we, when we twist the truth, we find out the truth. Right. Wait, Wait a minute. What if we're still smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap? Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Lana, maybe right after all. What What do you mean, right? Oh, so you do tell foul lies then, Mr. Wright? Miss <laughs> 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 Sky, please testify once more. But if evidence was fabricated behind your back, that Emma accidentally killing a prosecutor marshal might also be a lie. Oh, snap. But, but I don't remember knocking over Mr. Marshall. Miss Sky, if you will. I, I can't. There is nothing to be afraid of anymore. This cross-examination may not change a thing. However, there is a possibility that it will, if you tell the truth. Very well. I'll testify about what I really saw. All right. Progress. All right. The witness may testify once more for the final time. I doubt. Well, is it really the final time? Like, seriously, judge. Actual crime scene. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on that suit of armor sword. Emma and Dark was lying unconscious on the floor nearby. When I saw what had happened, I thought... She did it. That's why I erased all the evidence that linked her to the murder. I had Chief Gant help me remove the sword from the body and carried it. But if it, if it really was a fabrication, Emma might be innocent. Unbelievable. The body was impaled on the armor's sword? You were the only one who saw that. If you, you, if you only had proof. Actually, I do have proof. What? All right. I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. What? To me? It's a picture I took of the crime scene as I encountered it. I thought it might be needed. In the book. What? But I don't remember receiving a picture like that. Well, Lana I'm... must have known. See, Mr. Wright? She really does have a fate in you. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please present this picture. I don't remember receiving any picture from Lana. <laughs> Lana says she gave it to you this she gave it to you this morning, right? I do I seem to remember getting something from her then. Let's check that evidence again. 
There must be a picture in there somewhere. Okay, I am controlling it. Yeah. Oh, now I get to. Okay. Oh. Hey, there's a picture here. I can't believe we didn't. Open the book. Yeah. We opened the book, but we didn't open the book. Open, open the book. Hey, there's a Oh, oh my. This is the actual crime scene. No, no other detective saw the crime scene like this. That's because I contacted Criminal Affairs only after I rearranged the scene. <gasps> Mr. Wright, that piece cut out from his vest, could that be? The cloth the, the that we found inside Chief Gant's safe. What's this? It's a headprint. That cloth, it had fingerprints on it. Whoever fingerprints those are must be the real murderer. Uh, what? But those fingerprints, they're yours, Emma. Why are your like, lips turning all purple, Mr. Wright? Anyway, let's get on with the cross-examination. So long as you tell the truth, we should be able to flush out who the real murderer is. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. 